everyone and welcome to the KCP community meeting for October 18th. Um, I have the community meeting agenda up here. It doesn't look like we have uh, very much on the agenda, but I wanted to open it up if anybody's got anything at the moment. Um, feel free to raise your hand and we can go over that. Yeah, go ahead, Andy. Uh, since nobody else is uh, raising, I'll I'll just give an update on the conversion work that I've been working on. So there's a Kubernetes, uh, or KCP Kubernetes pull request and a KCP pull request to add support for conversions <laughs> of. Uh, it actually would work for normal custom resource definitions. But it's primarily developed for API resource schemas and API exports and API bindings. But you can define a new type called API conversion. And there's a one to one map or mapping between an API conversion instance and an API resource schema or CRD instance. And in there, you can define conversion rules. So, um, you don't need to use a webhook to do conversions. We actually don't support conversion webhooks at this time. And um, you can also optionally do CEL based, which is a common expression language transformations. Um, I need to probably go in and update the example there because the uh, syntax has changed just a little bit, but um, you can do straight field to field translation and transformations without needing to use CEL. And then uh, if you do need to perform some sort of uh, CEL logic on a field to be able to set it, you can do that with CEL. So I'll get that example updated um, after the meeting. But if you're interested, please check it out. Um, if you're interested in reviewing the two PRs, please do so. And uh, hopefully that'll get in sometime soon. Cool, thanks. Uh, Stefan, it looks like you added something about Cubebind. Yeah, I just want to give some very short introduction of what this is. So this will be visible at KubeCon, so better everybody knows how this is connected to KCP. So this is, it's a new project. Um, the majority of the, of the code is basically a bit more than a week old. I think most of you have seen this pitch at container days about binding resources. Everybody here in the, in the meeting knows binding, right? Binding API exports. Basically, this is a topic. But kubebind is basically um, the extension of what we have built in KCP into Kubernetes clusters. So the, the idea here, and this is the most important part for KCP, KCP is the natural backend for this mechanism. So if you want to offer an API service, for example, you are MongoDB, MongoDB, my example in the, in the talk, you want to run databases for customers and you want to, want to offer an API, which is um, Kubernetes based, so a CRD based API. Obviously, everybody here in the meeting would use KCP to create such an API and have controllers running against workspaces. And this kubectl bind um, is a client side binding command to get such an API, which is now just in KCP, but you want it in Kubernetes clusters. So it does something very similar to the Synca in KCP uh, to get CRDs down into the local cluster from an API resource schema in KCP. Parenthesis, this part is not implemented at the moment. Our example backend is uh, just running with CRDs in, um, you know, against any cube or even KCP, but just CRD based. There's work to do. But Kubernetes bind gets a CRD basically from, from upstream, from KCP, from a workspace, and will sync up objects of that CRD. So in Mongo, uh, MongoDB example, you will export, and here it's called API service export because it's not the KCP internal one, but very, very connected to that. You will define the MongoDB and get that into your Kubernetes cluster by installing the CRD from KCP into your Kubernetes. And then the Synca is, if you move further, there's a Synca basically, we call it connector, but it's very similar to the Synca. It, in the moment you create a MongoDB object in Kube, it will sync up. 
created in KCP in the workspace, the KCP controller will see that, do whatever it needs, like deploy a, a database, uh, for example, and sync status back from KCP from the workspace into, into Cube. So that's a very short description, the details here about the design, about the APIs. And you will notice um, it replicates basically what we do with um, permission claims, at least the vision uh, is the same at the moment. Everything we built here for this Cubebind tool should match KCP. So KCP is a natural backend. That's what the first sentence I said. Everything we do in Cubebind should match KCP API bindings and exports and vice versa, so that they are a good match and KCP can do what it should do. And um, in the agenda, I linked to YouTube. So um, Sergius, he's also here. He played with Cockroach in the afternoon. So he, he installed a Cockroach operator, just a stock operator, which you get from the company, and um, was basically showing how you can get uh, CRDB, that's uh, the CID, the, the resource uh, in this uh, context, how you get it into a cube cluster, create a CRDB object for a database. And at the, in the background, which is here the lower part, so stack terminals, you see that the operators do their work. So this opens up KCP basically to the world. That's the, sh yeah, the shortest pitch uh, about this project for KCP. It's community, it's, uh, it's open source, so um, we will ask for participation, people who are interested. And yeah, SaaS also thinks. So community should learn how to build SaaS based on Kubernetes and of course, KCP. KCP for anything larger scale, bigger context service providers, their KCP obviously is a choice. Yeah, does this scale to a service provider who provide, wants to provide a lot of service? If you use KCP, yes. <laughs> I see That's one points. thing on the right hand side, not like a pile of them sharp. Oh yeah. Or... So at the right side, um, this shows the example where you run the backend on one Kubernetes cluster. Obviously isolation is limited. You only have namespace isolation. Um, imagine to put a KCP there. I have an, another slide I didn't paste it here where you have KCP. So a workspace is then on the right side and on the left side there's a consumer cluster. Right. What if I have, what if I want to support a million users? Then use KCP. That's the point. But KCP, our, our target, uh, scale target is a million um, workspaces. So Every workspace My, matches a cluster. So on the right-hand side, you're not talking about one workspace. You're talking about a workspace per customer? Yeah, basically, this is, yeah, the whole thing is a workspace if you map it to KCP. So there's one workspace, the upper, which is an upper namespace, basically. Or, yeah, the cluster namespace. This is basically the meta administration in namespace, and then the user data is in the lower part. But the whole thing is one per tenant, or one per cluster, actually. Uh, okay, um, I, I don't want to take down the meeting going details, but okay, thank you. Okay, great. It, it, yeah, is, is that scaling plan kind of outlined anywhere? Uh, yes, in slides I haven't made public, so I can send you a link if you like. That'd be great, thank you. And you're talking about this at KubeCon, right, Stefan? Yes. Cool. Oh, and uh, speaking of KubeCon, we'll have a, an office hours for KCP on uh, Thursday, October, let's see, 27th at 2.30 Eastern, I believe. Yep, 2.30 PM Eastern. Uh, OK, so it doesn't look like we have anything else. I'll open up, open it up one last time before we go through issues. Okay, so we will start going down the list. Um, so we've got this from Dan. Oh, sorry, sorry to interrupt. I will have to drop off. I have few bugs, 555, 556. If you could look into those first, I could give an input if needed, else let's drop them to the next week. Okay, sure.
Go for it. Okay, so this one is a very simple one. So I ran the KCP in a bit different configuration that I've entered in. It looks like binding never recovers if it fails. Like everything works fine, but the status is being marked as failed and never recovers. Should be simple check basically where to, on the next three queue, basically check if it's valid, set it to success. I think this is maybe a duplicate of 1564 or semi related. Um, there's a chance that pull request 2189 might fix this, but I I wasn't specifically attempting to um, when I was working on yeah, it. Yeah, if, if you just think that PR in the in the issue, I will double check tomorrow. Okay, thanks. Uh, Nolan, that was 2189 for the PR. Cool, thank you. And then I believe you said five, five, six on this list. No, not this one. Okay. Maybe one. One div uh, double decoration. Yeah, this one. This one is fun. I created a basically use export from uh, sync targets. And both sides exposing and consuming has to provide identity. And the result is that they get the identity hash double decorated on URL. I pasted two log lines below. I basically turned off the logging high and I can see that identity hash is appended two times to the, to the URL and sending over in 404. The fix is quite trivial and easy, but I didn't push it because it feels wrong. And I I think it should be somewhere else. But yeah, we basically have now two places where we decorate the URL with identity in the code. This fix, did you put that in uh, bootstrap slash identity dot go or both of them? Uh, Second, uh, yeah, identity.go basically, if I put into that, it just works. But the fix is very simple. Like if if you what's see the, the what's signs the of identity appended. To get this to happen? Sir? What was the client uh, behavior that you did I, to actually get this to happen? So API export basically uses sync targets as a, with identity, so different API, and the same on the consuming side. So I think this is a consequence is because, and I, this is assumption, that both sides use the third party API, so workloads, KCP dev, and both sides provide that identity hash in the, in the binding and export. Sorry, so are you, if you're issuing a request through the virtual API server for the export in the translation yeah, yeah. you get? Okay. Yeah, it's basically the controller tries to read the sync targets, identity, basically sync targets, and I can see that double, double hash is stacked. It would be helpful if you could add the, like a client side reproducer for this to see how it's entering. Cool. Okay. If people can, okay. if the logs basically look wrong, I mean, double identity, yeah, I can try to look into that. If you could leave a comment that this is needed, I will look into that tomorrow. And Nolan, make sure you put it in the backlog. Thanks. Yep. 
and look at this one put the back lock as well okay uh was that all um, I'm, yeah thank you yep thank you okay um i don't know if dan is on the call doesn't look like um so he assigned this to himself and then this one doesn't have a pr with it um is this should we put this in the backlog or in progress Uh, you can tag him and ask. Backlog is fine for now. Okay. Okay. Oops. Next up, soft impersonation has mutation issues. Oh, uh, Mo and I were just looking at the code there, and there were a bunch of side effect mutation things that might be a problem. Okay. Probably surges. I don't know if you're, he's around, but it'd be good for him to take, take a look at it. Sure thing. Please assign it to me. I didn't catch this one. Did you have something you wanted to ask, Andy? No, I said let's assign it. OK. OK. This one's just a bug. Somebody needs to go fix it. OK. Okay, another one from Dan. I thought this one. Yeah. This one has a PR. I don't know that that fixes it or does it. Or I guess it did have the admission bit. Fixes 2161. Oh, it fixed 2161, not XREF. More work to be done for exposing. OK. OK, so there's still more to be done with it. All right. Uh, this was a feature request for updating the tree command to have some way to specify basically a different route. Um, I like Andy's from suggestion here. I think this would be backlog. This one was a flake I started seeing last week. I think, Andy, you hit this a couple times as well. We're hitting it fairly frequently. So um, I don't, was this Shojen that, I don't know who did the placement test and code, but it'd be nice if whoever it was could take a look at it. OK. Um, so David, maybe you can uh, delegate this one. Yes, probably. Yes, I have to contact him. Thanks, David. OK. 
Okay. Uh, another feature for the CLI, um, looking for the ready or not ready condition on API bindings. Seems reasonable to me. Looks like this one's already assigned. Um, yes, mainly, yes, I was assigned at first. Um, then we have to look into this, probably test a bit more. It's obviously some bugs in the sync command that prevent restarting it correctly. So um, there is some analysis to do here. OK. All right. It looks like this is part of an epic implement. This is from Steve. Implement a resource bootstrapper initializer as a surface. Sorry, uh, we broke this out. Yeah, as like one of the last. Uh, it's probably missing context. I can fill more in later. Okay. Uh, let's see. Which which um, should this go on an epic board? Uh, we're missing an epic for tenancy, I think. So, no, okay. not yet. I'm going to close out 1149, the epic. Okay, like thanks. I should, uh, I, I pressed the close button, but I guess it, uh, Done. Cool. The next one's the same thing. Same so, thing. Okay. Same deal with the uh, the epic link. There's no epic board for it yet. Yes. All right. Prove integration test. Okay, so this looks like it was pulled out of a comment. Um, Nolan? Yeah. Just more question. <laughs> I'm sorry because I unfortunately need to run. Uh, there is a issue that was raised i asked a community member to raise it, it's the stream z operator i believe it's 608 um don't hesitate this one to me um i asked the person to submit an issue um just fyi i'm sorry to interrupt I just oh yeah to... no worries i'll send that over to you and uh, since this involves um the synker, maybe somebody who has synker knowledge could help me a little bit in debugging. Yeah, you can contact me when you you now. are on the on this. Uh, I would have liked to attend the, you know, to look into StreamZ integration anyway. So that would be. Okay, cool. Let's work together on this one. Thank you. Sorry. Oh, no worries. Thank you. All right. Put this one on backlog. And got another flick here with the tunneler test integration. Yeah, flakes can just automatically go into the backlog. Okay, cool. This next one was weird. So I saw it in a um, a test run. Some part of the Go interface table was nil, and I found a reference to a bug from maybe five years ago that they said this should never happen. Um, I don't know if this is something we should just, we can keep it open, and if folks run into it, make 
you know, link references in uh, future comments, but there's not anything we can do with it other than maybe upgrade Go. It was a weird one because it has nothing to do with CEL as best as I know. Okay. Looks like this is a question about docs. Yes. Um, I think we can put that in, in backlog. Okay. And keep in mind as well that we are in the middle of, you know, a quite big epic. Well, at the end of a quite big epic about compute uh type and so probably this would be an opportunity as well at the end of the epic to we will have to check all the docs and to ensure that everything is consistent after the the the, the various epic steps have have completed so i mean probably i can link this one to the epic as well and and we can okay. review the corresponding docs at this time if you think it's it's is the right way. OK. That makes sense to me to not change it if you're in the middle of a big refactor. Yeah. Uh, is that the compute type management epic? Yes, exactly. Yeah. Cool. I was like, namespaces for workload clusters. This looks like sinker. Yes, it seems like um, I think we can put that in in backlog, and also I'll uh, you can just assign it to me or something like that because it seems to me that it would have we would we would have a similar requirements um, for other parts of the TMC, especially for in cluster networking, uh, for also security related aspects of TMC networking. We will have to be able to select a number of downstream namespaces according to the corresponding upstream workspace. So it seems that you know it's a sort of similar requirement. So gotcha. uh, I think we have to you know, uh, start a mainly a design on how to uh, select those according to, to this type of criteria. OK. Just, just for clarity, this is not about users selecting them. It's about the system selecting them. Yes. OK, yeah, that's mm -hmm. fine. Well, uh, in this issue, it's still allowing Prometheus or you know such uh, third party tools to select them. So I mean, depends on what you call user. <laughs> yes, the user should not be able to or give anything about the cluster. He's not aware of the cluster. So, yes, yes, I know. So I mean, that's why I said we have to to have to put some thought in this and and to have some design because it seems to me that initially, <clears throat> um, precisely the change to switch from sync target name to sync target you know hash and all this was uh, also to you know obfuscate obfuscate part of it for the end user. So yeah, we we have I think to to think. Well, this more 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 deeply and and really define the the limits and the scoping of what we want here. Yeah, makes sense. Cool. This came from Andy about an hour ago. This is, uh, no intention for this to go on a, uh, an epic right now. Um. Yeah, it's kind of a one-off. OK. Cool. Can you look at the drop downs real quick? Is there one from? Yeah. OK. Cool. Yeah, I mean, if you were going to create an epic, it would have to do with scaling.
Okay. Yes, this one you you can put in in uh, uh, backlog. Yes, we we just analyzed the the thing with uh, and Antonin, uh, you know, one hour ago. Okay. And it, it seems just uh, an inconsistency between between the the AP what, what is defined in the API uh, in the comment uh, and and the implementation of it. Gotcha. Okay, that's it for those. Did we want to review the milestone epics? I think these are kind of outdated. I yeah, am I'm curious sure this is... for, for PNF. Um, Mike, do you know if Jamie's made any progress? Uh, yeah, he's working on it. He is making progress. OK, do we still think it'll get in in the next few days? No, next few days. What's what's the timeline we're looking for here? Um, I mean, ideally, I would say given that KubeCon is next week and folks aren't going to have time to really focus on reviewing, it kind of needs to get pushed. Uh, for a review in the next day or two, or it's going to slip to um, 0 0.11. Well, let me just text him right now, um, and uh, can I get back to you in a couple minutes? Sure thing. OK. OK. And we have this multi-release epic. I don't know if this is. Um, yeah, this one uh, was not closed, but mainly uh, is being superseded by the by, by the next one, compute type, and multi-syncer uh, syncing. So, multi-sync target syncing. Um, no, get off. What was that? Uh, compute type management. No, I mean you you you. I, I think we should probably cl close that because it's okay. mainly supported by a, by a, by another one. Okay. I think that's it. Um, anybody have anything else? Well, I am. Uh, Jamie's typing his reply to me right now. Oh, okay. I think once we get that, we can wrap for this week. Okay. Get out of there. Uh, negative. Yeah, he won't be ready this week. Okay. Okay. So we'll move it to zero eleven. I'll make a new zero eleven. Okay. Uh, all right. Thank you, everyone. Uh, Thank you. We'll give you about twenty minutes of your time back, and see you all at KubeCon if you'll be attending. Yeah. Bye. 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 Bye.